Copyright Disclaimer Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act, 1976, allowance is made for fair use for the purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship and research. Fair use policy is in effect. How are you mentally? I'm okay. I'm overwhelmed. I'm not going to lie. I'm exhausted. Um, <laughs> just going to be very candid. I have not really slept um, since yesterday because people have been inboxing me and wanting to, me to tell my side and things like that. So I just had stuff running through my mind all day. So it's been a little stressful, just to be honest. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry that you... <laughs> have your peace or whatever you, whatever little bit of peace you got disrupted. I'm so sorry for that. That's not okay. Um, I'm yeah. to start off with, where are you from? I'm from Boston. I'm from Boston, Boston born and raised. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You have siblings? I do. It's, it's now, see, it's now six of us. Okay. All together, six of us now, because my sister just passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. My condolences. Um, Thank you. So, Growing up, did you come from like a traditional household? What was that like growing up? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> um, our lives were pretty much a whirlwind. Um, you know, we had loving people that loved us, but it wasn't anything traditional about it. It was more so like, you know, you better get it how you live, <laughs> figure it out and keep it moving. So, okay. you know, we were afloat because we were able to do what we needed to do, but it was hard. It was really hard. So we basically had to learn how to maneuver in life by ourselves. Because like my siblings, they my mother died when they were very little. Mm. See, me and my sister were the oldest and they're 10, 12, 14 years younger than us. So they had it the hardest. We were already growing when our mother passed away. So, but me having my son very young, cause it was, you know, 16 you know, back in 95, having him very young, it was one of those situations where now I have to be a mother, so I can't watch your children anymore. Oh, okay, you were a young mother. One of those things. So I went from babysitting to now raising my, you know, raising my own child, so yeah. That wasn't easy, I know that's not easy. So No, <laughs> I had I had help from the village, yes, because <laughs> I could not do it by myself. We love that. I love that you have a village. I like I like hearing that. That makes me feel good. Yeah. You gotta have a village. You can't do it by yourself. You come from like a, a like religious background. Yes. Um and I'm not trying to say anything bad. I mean it's perfectly fine. I that's just not my forte my forte. They were Baptists and then one of them then they try to convert us to be Jehovah's Witnesses. And then once that was done, I was like, I'm not doing any of this. So, you know, I was still trying to figure out my way religiously. And then, you know, I just became a spiritual, spiritual person. And that's just the journey that I've been on self love, you know, and me finding me and me doing things for me so that I can make sure that I can give back to others. Instead of me looking and searching for something outside of myself, I'm looking inside of myself so that I can help others. And that I so that I can have and get that self love that I need. So yeah. yeah. Things aren't making sense. You were questioning when they were telling you not to question. Yup, all the time. Definitely get it. I know what that looks like. And I was called the devil. I was called so many things. I was like, I don't, I, I don't give a, I, I know I can't cuss on you, so I'm not going to cuss. I don't, I do not care. I, yeah. I remember I was watching the videos and I, I seen mm -hmm. a video that you made and you were speaking to, you know, how you felt about yourself. You were speaking mm -hmm. about your self-esteem and yeah. I just wanted to know, just kind of, you know, you said that you were a young mother, what yeah. kind of caused, you know, the insecurities to kind of flare up around that time? How do, how do we get to that point? Yeah. So at 16 years old, you know, you're supposed to have protectors, right? Cause you're still a child, right? So there were no, there, like the parents were there, but there was no protection put in place right so you get to the point where you want that protection but you kind of don't have it so you have to maneuver and figure out your own way and you know you I met a guy and you know uh we didn't even go to the same school but he was uh 
he was friends with a family member or whatever the case might be. And that's how, that's all that she wrote. So not having the supervision that I honestly should have had, it was like, well, somebody will give me some attention, you know? So it was one of those things. It took, it took me 30, 30 something years for me to get to the place that I'm, that, that I'm at right now. Okay. Yeah. At least you got there. It's one thing to not get there at all. Absolutely. Right? Listen, absolutely. You got there. Absolutely. That's bigger than anything else. And that's all that matters. You're damn, you're sorry. You're right. You're so right. Girl, you're I so right. It's okay. You can come. Oh, okay. You <laughs> don't have to filter yourself in here. It is safe. Okay, okay. Okay, it is safe. Okay. So I do want to know, how do you think that, your insecurities affected your relationships, whether it Ooh. I do want to know, how do you think that your insecurities affected your relationships, whether it was children, um, with friends, family, how do you think that that affected your relationship? I mean, it made me, it made it hard to trust, mm. you know, like I didn't trust anybody. Um, that's including my parents. <laughs> so, you know, that says a lot. Uh, when you can't even trust your own parents, you're definitely not going to trust yourself. Then on turn, in turn, you're not going to trust anybody else outside of that. So any relationships that I've ever had, that's with, you know, my children or family members or friends. It seemed to be always a problem because I couldn't trust anybody. So, you know, I, I stay around for a little bit and then I have to go. Because I don't want anybody breaking my heart by leaving me first and all the rest of these other things, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Now that we've gotten a little brief, you know, introduction to who you are, yeah. everybody wants to know, because you know why they're here, girl. They all want to know. I already know. <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, how did you meet Mr. Jerome? Mm. I'm going to tell you guys how I met him, but before I do... I want to explain something. Can I explain something real quick? I want to explain something to people because a lot of people have a misconception for the video that I made this morning. And I don't want anybody to take it wrong. When I was speaking about Risa, I give her so much props for even being able to tell her story. Let me tell you something. I was never going to tell my story, ever, because I didn't want people to know what I went through. Right. Does that make sense? So I give her so much so many props because she had the guts to actually tell the story, you know? So I just wanted to be like a person if she needed to talk to or whatever. Is the reason for why you didn't want to tell anyone because you, it was embarrassment? You're embarrassed at. Honestly, because it was like, I didn't want to keep bringing it up. If that makes any sense, you know, like one of those things, like I just wanted to heal from it and get past it and be done, you know, because my fa my family for the most part knows what happened. And that was kind of all that I needed at that time. You have to realize this was a long time ago, right? So there was no TikTok for me to make videos or whatever the case might be. Not saying that I would have, cause I'm a really private person. And it's one of those things. I just, I don't, I don't, like people asking me and, and trying to like do this and do that and all the rest of this stuff. It's like, you know what? I'd rather just heal and try to just go forward. That's all because that mother, that, that motherfucker broke me. He broke me down to bare bones, but I'm going to explain to you guys how I met him. So I was dating this other guy <laughs> and I wasn't thinking about Jerome cause I didn't even know him, but I had just moved to Augusta. This is in 2009. I just moved to Yo, y'all, oh my God. <laughs> y'all, I'm only on here because I'm here to collaborate Risa Tisa's story. I too survived Legion, AKA Jerome McCoy, AKA Rome McCoy, AKA out of Augusta, AKA pathological liar, AKA I'm from Philly, AKA I had to call the police to get this man out of my apartment in Clayton County. And by the grace of God, the situation went the way that it went because the police had to put a restraining order on him not to come back to my home, my property. I mean, it wasn't a restraining order. It was like a trespassing order. I'm sorry. I want to get it right. Um, that he agreed to. And the police had to come to my home 
at like 11, 12 o'clock that night when I was putting this stuff out. And again, that morning, because I had to figure out a way to get his pathological, weird, narcissistic behind out of my home. And I'm not laughing at Reese. I'm, I'm totally not. I'm not even laughing at the situation. I'm laughing because I know what kind of trauma came behind that short period of time relationship. He lied to my family, told my family he played for the Cowboys or something like that. I don't know. Um, and my sister and my family can collaborate the story. We spent Christmases together, like holidays. We lived together. Like we physically lived together. Um, the same shoes that he posted in one of his videos, it was some felines, some black felines. Girl, guy, I got that from, I got them shoes from Shoe Show on Old National in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, they were some felines and he wanted some peanut butter bottom felines because I had, at the time that was really popular, I could say 2020, 2014, peanut butter bottom shoes was really popular. Ever had peanut butter bottom Air Force Ones, peanut, just peanut butter bottom, read, bo bo everybody wanted some peanut butter bottom which is the brown gummy looking bottoms on their kick. So I, I had that. He probably got some Jordans. Um, it was some stuff that we got for Christmas. Now he had, now where he get this money from y'all, I don't know, but I will tell you this brother couldn't keep a job, would not keep a job more than a few months. Probation officer showed up at my door one day, told me, I really don't know who I'm dealing with, but she wouldn't give me no freaking details. Clayton County, y'all ought to be ashamed. I should sue y'all now because he probably had done this to other women, which is why he was on probation more than likely. Um, but come to find out as the, the son of uh, the other woman that he was with prior, I, I got it fresh, y'all. I'm talking about fresh, like the guy who beat him up. Um, I got it fresh. He actually got locked up when we were talking for a uh, violation of probation. They pulled him over and somehow, I don't even like remember back then, like he got pulled over. They saw that he had a warrant for his arrest. He got taken to Clayton County then. That was probably like in 2015. Um, the probation people, they, they ended up letting him out. He was only in there for maybe about Maybe about three weeks or so, maybe three or four weeks, was begging to get out. Thought I was finna post bail. I was like, no. Thought he was finna get in my pockets. I was like, no. Um, thought he was coming back. I was like, no, you gotta go. Y'all, he walked from Clayton County, and I'll tell y'all now, he walked from Clayton County Jail to my apartment, um, which I'm not gonna tell y'all exactly, but it was off West Fayetteville Road, gated community, walked from Clayton County Jail to my apartment one morning, like they released him or something, and he walked to come back to my apartment. And I was like, how did you get here? Where, what happened? You know, because I did not want him to come back to my home. Um, sorry, y'all, my phone was about to go there. But anywho, Risa Tisa is telling the truth. Girl, I'm sorry you married him. I I'm so sorry. I made him do an HIV test back in the day. Um, he was nowhere even, even now. I mean, he looks way different now. Um, but like she said, very charming, told the greatest stories. Oh, he's a mirror. If you look at classic narcissism, he did. And at that time, y'all, I had no clue what being a narcissist was. I did not know. I had no clue. But when I say textbook, pathological liar, narcissistic with borderline personality disorder. Yeah, I got it all diagnosed, y'all, because I had to go to therapy to get over this craziness, thinking that I was cuckoo, and I was not. Um, Risa Tisa, girl, reach out to me, girl. I can fill in some of them blanks for you, because that was from 2014 to 2016. He had a break in there where he had two other women, uh-huh, two others, um, before he met you and I met him on a dating site back then, uh, on Facebook, I think as a matter of fact, still was on Facebook. Um, that might, it might've been Facebook. I think it was Facebook, but anywho, it, the online dating was really just kicking off. Like people really didn't like it, you know, really didn't trust it. I definitely don't trust it, have not trusted it since, but girl hit me up um message me i could give you and fill in some details for you yeah he told me his mom passed his dad um was a police officer and he found him dead in the house so he was traumatized from that he had a friend in augusta um named tabitha that he used to talk back and forth with on yeah i'm giving names of receipts honey because i don't care um that he used to talk back and forth with um his aunt lived, he had an aunt in Florida and he had an aunt and an uncle, I think, in Philly. They used to send him money back and forth. The aunt in Florida just finally cut him off 
because she was like, I'm not giving Rome any more money. He, he needs to get a job and he needs to stand up on his two feet. The brother that he told me about, um, I think the, the, the mom, I don't, y'all, it was just so much. Like she said, because he talked the way he talks, he circles you and he'll have you confused, not really understanding what you understand that, you know, you understand that, you know, you know, um, it, it, it's just, and that's the trick of a, of a manipulator. Like that's, that's what they do. Um, the brother that he told me was his brother. I found out later was not his brother. He claimed he owned a gym and he was going to be a partner with this company and they were going to buy him a company car, um, all kinds of stuff. Y'all like the lies were so, and like she said, the crazy part is y'all, I don't know how he does it. He had paperwork. He had paperwork to prove this stuff. Like for real had paperwork. So you would, I saw emails about the guy saying, oh yeah, go and take a look at the car. Let me know what you think. So I think he goes around and just creates emails and sends himself emails co to collaborate his story. Yeah, girl, we all up at the BMW and the Mercedes Benz dealership off Cobb Parkway in Atlanta, Georgia at the Audi dealership looking at R8s and all this kind of stuff. I, I look back now and I was just like, I mean, I wouldn't have known because like I said, he literally had names, paperwork to collaborate the story. So I don't, and he told me the same thing about getting a job at one point. He was going to be a regional manager for Tyrus Plus. He told my mama that lie and told, show, took a picture and sent it to my mom. And she was just like, girl, he took a picture of the floor and sent it to me. Like we knew, you know, because I was planning my exit because you have to plan an exit strategy to get away from somebody like that. It's not just up, you know, you just up and go because they're crazy. Like he's, <laughs> I'm just telling y'all, I survived girl. I hope Tyler Perry does pick this up because the story needs to be told so that women can protect themselves. I, to this day, still have to second and third and fourth guess um just simply because you can't believe what you believe until you believe it until you know that it's the truth like people used to say you you believe none of what you hear and 80 percent of what you see it made me not even believe the 80 percent that i saw like seriously not even make like it took a long time y'all it's 2024 and this young lady had been dealing with this since 2020 so I can only imagine what it's going to take for her. I, 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 I pray for her. She's going to have to go to narc abuse therapy because it really, and it's going to be so many triggering moments even after this that she's going to run into. It's going to be so much. It's, it's going to be so much that she's going to have to deal with. So y'all, she's telling the truth. She's not lying. Um, everything she says, I can collaborate um, I have pictures somewhere. I, I would have to go back and look through like my old phones and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's the truth. My family will even come on and collaborate the story that this, this is him. This, this is what he does. And luckily I was able to get out. I'm safe and sound. I have moved on to a happy, loving, amazing relationship. And yeah, Tessa girl, do your thing. Emotional damage. You want some therapy?